everybody. We here at McStabber Studios appreciate you tuning in to see our tabletop RPG streams. Some of the content of our streams may be a bit mature and cause emotional responses in viewers. We really take the well-being of our viewers very seriously, and we want you to do what you need to if something triggers you. Mute the stream, take a break, or just skip an episode. Otherwise, if you decide to stay tuned in, we are available in chat during the streams to talk you through it if you need that. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy this game session. Why dost thou sit upon my grave and well dead lips to speak? Why dost thou weep upon my grave and well not let me sleep? My breast it is. As cold as clay, my breath is earthly strong. And if you kiss my cold clay lips, your days they won't be long. How oft on yonder grave, sweetheart, where we That e'er I saw has withered to a stalk. When will we meet again, sweetheart? When will we meet again? When the autumn. Good evening, and welcome to McStabber Studios' Wraith Life Derailed. This is episode one, end of the line. And of course, I am the storyteller, Shanky McStabber. I am Tamshu the Roving DM, and I'm playing Isaac Kandanovich, also known as Eye Candy. I'm I... Sorry. <laughs> I'm Ravina, I'm the Squishy Bear... And I'm playing Margot Fallon. Now yeah. it's your turn, Dan. Now it's me, isn't it? Yeah, now it's you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> First cool. dreams are always fun. I'm House, and I'm playing Noah Frost. I'm Rylan Dare, Shanky's wife, and I'm playing Alexis Langley. I'm Uriah. I'm playing Tarquinius Tiernan. Most people call me Tor. I'm Evie Eternal, and I'm playing Aurora Walker. And before we begin tonight, a few words I want to say. Uh, due to the nature of this stream, I, we do have a mature, mature content warning, but I want to warn everybody a second time that if you need a break or at any point you need to step away from the stream or even turn it off, feel free to do so. This is going to be a very dark, emotionally game. 
and we prefer to take the mental health of our viewers and our players seriously. And on that note, because this is a recorded game, if at any point we need to take a break for um, the red or X card played or uh, for otherwise a pause due to the emotional activity in the game, we will stop the recording, which is a deviation from our normal uh, record straight through. But that is so we can handle the situation at hand and then resume. I just wanted to let everybody know that that will be a, a little bit of editing that will be going on. So we are going to begin. When it comes to death, we all possess a ramshackle of hope, faith, fear, desire, and denial. Our minds conjure up unique vision, images drawn from dusty folklore, kinetic pop culture, and the annals of personal experience. The mask of death is whatever we make it to be. Like beauty, death rests in the eyes of the beholder. But call it what you will, the truth of it cannot be denied, just as it cannot be thwarted. For some, death is as horrible as it is understandable, a scourge and a devil. For others, it is less terrifying and more palatable, annoying, but irrelevant. To a few, it is a benevolent God, an entity to be understood and respected. For many, death has become anthropomorphized, no more than a concept or a tool. Some of us pretend it doesn't matter, but in the end, it's the only relationship we possess that doesn't die. Death is always with us. It walks beside us on those cold, dark nights, stands at the foot of our bed while we sleep, and it rides with us as we travel the byways of life. Tickets, please. You all remember being told that as you boarded this train on the way to Richmond. Now, as you're moving through the countryside, heading south towards the city, you've gathered in a bar where there are, of course, a number of patrons. And the scene is opening with a bartender. Standing behind the bar, and because the trip has just left the station coming out of D.C., actually, you all have walked up to the bar at almost the same time, leaving him to try to gather the drinks of all six. And I leave the scene to the players. Hey, Mr. T. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Uh, if you could hold on just a moment, I'm going to take care of the ladies here. Sure. No problem. Ladies, what can I get for you this evening? Mm, something simple. Maybe a, a gin and tonic, if you don't mind. All right. And you, uh, with the red hair. A uh, martini. Dirty. All right. And, young lady, how about you? Cure Royale, please. And he turns around and just starts going to town making drinks. Turns around, slides them all back out to you. Looks over and, Mr. T, what can I get for you? Oh, I thought you were serving the ladies first. This, uh, the other one here. At the bar needs to be served first. Are you- we have our drinks. Or are you talking to oh. one of the the other patrons in the place? Yes. Oh. Uh, because there is well, a, a young okay, blonde. Yeah. There is a blonde at the at the bar with you, of course. Okay. But she hasn't really signaled she's wa wanting to speak with the bartender yet. She's actually appears to be looking for somebody or waiting for somebody to approach. She's keeps you see her check her watch and look at the door and check her watch and look at the door, not paying much mind to the rest of the patrons sitting at the bar right now. Uh, you've been patient. What can I get for you? I will make it my usual. Uh, Kraken and Coke. Heavy right. on the Kraken. Very good. And he will turn around, get it ready, hand it over to you. And then he'll look over and see the man in the hat over off on the side there. And I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't see you over there. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, looks down. Uh, Whatever red you have. 
I'll look around. I'm find not something that find something that looks good. Put a little Thank bit you. in the glass and hand it to you and go, give it a taste. See what you think. It's fine. All right. So I will pour a little bit more in the glass. Thank All you. Right. You guys have anything else? Just uh, lift a hand and let me know. I'm going to go walk down and uh, check the people at the tables real quick because uh, apparently our waitress hasn't made it on the car yet. We'll handle that. And I will stop by the blonde on the way and go, do you need anything? Uh, no, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for a friend. Uh, she was supposed to meet me on the train, but I guess she, I mean, maybe she got in on the other side and she just hasn't made her way here yet because I don't, she was supposed to, I'm coming through from New York. She was supposed to get on in, in D.C., but I don't know if she's made it or not. I, well, I'll, she doesn't I'll let you come know. along. If she doesn't come along, let me know. We can chat a little bit. Uh, would you like a glass of water or something while you wait? Uh, water's fine. Yeah, yeah. I can. I'll take a All water. Right. So he will go back and bring her a glass of water, and set it down, and put it on a napkin, and slide it over to her. I'll check on and you in a little while. She barely glances at it and goes back to nervously looking at her watch and checking the door. All right. And I will make my way around the other patrons who are sitting at the tables, and see okay, if and anybody you, needs anything. You work your way around the bar, and you. There's a number of people. I mean, most of them are just wanting a little drink, but they've obviously the the ones who didn't step up to the bar have gathered in groups of ones and two or twos and threes. Group of one is not one. It's not a group, but twos and threes. And uh, I mean, it, it's early evening, so there's a number of people wanting to get a little relaxed, I guess you could say, as the train moves on through the countryside. Noah's going to just move to kind of a stay on the bar car, but just move if there's a corner spot open, just move there and open up his laptop and start um, doing some work. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, Margot. Uh, pardon me, I, I, I like your outfit. Um, what, uh, what brings you to this particular train? Uh, on our way back to Richmond. Oh, heading home. Yeah. Fair enough. Long time for work. I travel a lot nowadays. Oh, what do you do? I do IT freelance security work. Oh, that's awesome. I know there's a lot of money in that. My honey uh, works a little bit of that herself. So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, goodness. Exhausted. I've been up since four this morning. <laughs> Me too. I've been running around. It's it's been intense. I'm really excited to get back home. Same. I've got to get home and make dinner still, unfortunately, but you know, what can you do, right? Actually, I'll tell you a little secret. I'm showing up to Richmond a day early. Oh, how come? Just to have a little day for myself. Before Fair getting enough. back to the normal. Gotcha. What, what time of day is it? It would be probably right about five o'clock right now. You're on okay. uh, one of the last of the passenger trains before uh, the commuter trains start taking over and there's no bar car. It's just packed wall to wall with the people leaving New York and D.C. to go wherever they're happening to be heading south at this point. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, um... I, I'm actually a, a, a fiction writer. I was actually just meeting with one of my agents. So, oh my yeah. goodness, that is exciting! <laughs> yeah, I know it's um, it's definitely quite the life. You know, it's um, I haven't actually finished anything like in a while, but you know, uh, may maybe you've heard of my book. Uh, it's called. It's the series called True Sanctuary. Um, <gasps> really. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Aurora Walker. Uh. Oh my goodness, that's that's amazing. Hold on one second. And I reach into my bag and I pull out a small box and set it on the, the bar because I wasn't paying attention to where I was putting. And then I pull out the first book. <laughs> <gasps> oh, it's 
always so nice to meet a fan. <laughs> and at the mention of that, you overheard part of that, Tark. And you also recognize the book, not that you've read it, but your wife has read it. And you know that's one of hers on her collection. So uh, you, I'm sure you weren't eavesdropping, but you did catch the name and it triggers a memory in you. <laughs> My goodness, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mind signing it, would you? Oh, no, of, co- of course not. Of course not. No, please. Thank you. Um, it's always nice to meet somebody who's read my work you know i it's not the longest it's probably not the most complex but you know she'll uh, um, reach into her purse and take out a small pen as if she's had to do this before and uh uh who am i making this out to just to you yeah it's to margo to margo she'll uh take a second to write that down uh and then close the cover here you are. Oh my goodness, thank you. Of course. <laughs> it's not every day you meet someone like that on a train. Oh my goodness. Oh, I know. It's It's been a while. Though. It's been like, oh, I'm trying to finish the trilogy. Believe me, that's what I went to the meeting for. So That just it seems so intense. I mean, the creativity needed to write books and book series. Oh my goodness, I, I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm not that creative. <laughs> Uh, you just play a lot of tabletop games, Dungeons and Dragons, Vampire the Masquerade, you know, and, and suddenly ideas come to you all the time. <laughs> I always wanted to play. <laughs> no, this is so much fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, she'll just kind of sip the gin and tonic as we talk and uh, <laughs> continue to make idle conversation. Yep. And, and while this is going on, Alexis, you... Uh... You actually get a text, and it's a pretty, well, it's a pretty abrupt text. It's just two words. You bitch. (laughs) And I just respond... Did you expect to not repay a lifetime investment? You get back. My lawyer will take everything I can from you. (laughs) You know what I do for a living. I have all the evidence I need to own you. And then I block the number. Isaac's going to stop at some point after taking care of the patrons and uh, text uh, his waitress to see where she's at. Uh, she is uh, replies back rather quickly, actually. I got tied up. People saw me coming and kept stopping me. I'll be there in a minute. And, right. of course, the rest of the patrons, especially the ones gathered at the bar, obviously sees Alexis get a a text and then kind of slam her phone down to the bar with a, a grin on her face of a bit of satisfaction. She's actually picking the phone back up and she's calling her lawyer. No, Noah's going to pick up his phone and well and uh, call, call his wife, Claire. Okay. We'll handle Alexis's first. Lieberwitz and how? <laughs> Paul, darling, I assume he was served. How'd you know? Oh, I got the most lovely text from him. Save them all. I did. Because, you know, if we can get him for harassment <laughs> on top of everything else, <laughs> on we top might be of able to. Everything else. I mean, get, get enough together and we can slap him with a restraining order. Sure, it won't mean much, but every little bit, you know, will. Influence the judge when it oh, comes time. Oh, of course. I mean, what I turned into you already should make it pretty locked tight. But, you know, if he wants to add fuel to the fire, well, I'll give him enough rope to hang himself. That seems like the plan to me. Um, so, anything further that you need from me? Uh, not yet, um... You're going to pop into our offices when you get back in town? Yeah, yeah. We're scheduled right after the new year, so I'll, I'll be in for that, that meeting. That'll be fine. I mean, I don't expect much progress on the case anyway because holidays coming up and all. It's Yeah. I not, mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get it taken care of, though. You, 
we've got him served. That's the, the hard part of it. Mm-hmm. Now it's he's got to do a scramble to get his lawyer together. And then I got to talk to his lawyer and his lawyer. You, you know the game. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we'll get it taken care of, though. And I, I'll see you in the office when you come back in town. Just, All right. just you know, ring, ring my secretary, let her know you're in town, and we'll schedule something out. Will do. Paul, I hope you and your family have a wonderful holiday. Oh, you have a Merry Christmas. And thanks. Can you call up Claire? Hey, hey, sweetie, uh, when are you coming home? Uh, you know, I'm heading, I have to head to Richmond. You you knew this. Um, yeah, but it was real sudden. I, I just, I'm worried. Yeah, it shouldn't be a long trip. I don't plan on being there long. Um, I'm on the train now. Um, shouldn't shouldn't be a long trip. Um, me, meeting someone uh, there, hopefully, for some information. I said, yeah, I mean, you understand. I can't tell you much more than that, but... Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I support you in, in what you're doing. It's just I worry because just abrupt trips, you know, with not much notice, it's kind of, it worries me. No, no, I appreciate it. I really do. Sorry, my head hurts like a son bitch right now. Well, take something. Uh, I am. Okay. I am. It, just, just, you know, try, try not to get too worked up and, I mean, just. Whatever your business is, get it done. Come on home. And, you know, I'm here. I mean, it's okay. Just, I worry. No, no, I know. I know. I had uh, just a bad dream last night that something was going to happen on this train. And I, I just worry, you know, that I just know I feel it in me that, that something bad's coming. And it just worries me. Uh, yeah, the, only, the worst thing that could probably happen is me not getting enough done. There's, there's some author here that's causing a ruckus. People are clamoring to meet her. Harder to get, going to be harder to get some work done. So, um, no, just wanted to call and tell you that I'm heading there, um, and I'll, I'll be home as soon as I can. Thanks for letting me know. I'm just I just worry about you. I know, I know. Love you, sweetie. Love you too. And then she hangs up. And at this point, the waitress comes back into the into the bar car, and you can see she's kind of frazzled. And she goes straight over to Isaac. And you would not believe how many people wanted to stop me and ask me all kinds of questions about, well, how long is it going to be? And, you know, what time can we expect to hit the station? And are there any more stuff? It's like people have, don't even know what's going on anymore. Isaac's going to take a quick look around to see if anybody's kind of looking in their direction. And, uh, if they all seem to be occupied, he's going to put his arm around her waist, hug her. It'll be all right. She's. Uh, I just can't wait for this one. This this trip to be done. We, you know, we got a birthday to celebrate coming up, and I, I you know, I got him a present. It's it's, it's under the bar. So that's nice. That, that'd be. Uh, he's going to love. It. I don't even know what it is, but he'll love it. You know, he really looks up to you. So. And then she so, just kind of glances around the room real quick and gives you a peck on the cheek and then kind of slips away and starts running around to try to, to check the tables to see if everyone needs everything. And Isaac will make his way back behind the bar and ladies, everything okay? You want me to top that up for you? Oh, each yes, of the players please. can give me, we're going to go with, well, you know, my favorite. We will go with actually perception and alertness to see if you saw that interaction between the bartender and the waitress. Do I get to use my detail oriented bonus? Yes, it doesn't give you any bonus dice, but you can re roll any 10 okay. that you come across. Now, you don't have to roll if you don't have to, but we're going to see who noticed that because they were a bit careful. The difficulty of this roll is six, but I will not tell you the margin. So um, we need to get above a six on the die? Yes, six or higher on the die. Okay, two successes. Two? Two successes as well. Two successes? Four successes. Okay, four. Anyone else? Tart didn't roll, said meh. Um, I'm not sure how the dice work in 
this game. You roll, uh, same as like with Vampire, so everyone knows. You will roll however many dots in Perception, add in however many dots of Alertness. If you have a specialization that applies, ask me, and if it does, you can re-roll tens. Now, of course, because of the way the dice are rolled, for every one you roll, it cancels one of your successes. So be careful of too many ones. And if you get, doesn't matter how many ones you've rolled, as long as at least one was a success before the ones took them away. But if you get zero successes and a one, you've botched the roll. Bad things will happen. And what, what counts as a success? Six or higher for this roll. It will change based okay. on the difficulty of the actions. So unlike uh, Chronicles of Darkness, it's not the amount of dice. It's that's It the can difference. be both. Okay, cool. I can set a margin and a difficulty number depending on what is going on. Okay, okay. Okay, that, okay. I see what you said when you said that. When you said, I don't, I'm not telling you the margin. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, not telling us how many we need. That's correct. <laughs> so that would be uh, two successes, but one of the die will roll the one. So that would cancel one of them. So you had one success. Okay. So we had a two, a two, a four, and a one. And is Noah rolling? Uh, am I close enough to be able yes, to? Yes, you would have seen it because you're in the actual bar car. You Do you have a chance of seeing it? Will I be able to use my uh, insightful specialty on perception? Yes, I will let it be used, but not for the n noticing. It's actually part of another part of that. Okay. Uh, four successes, no ones. Four successes. So, the two players with four successes, that would be, of course, Alexis and Noah. Now, Noah, you didn't really notice the arm around each other or the peck on the cheek, but you definitely can see the, the look of love in the waitress's eyes as she walks away from Isaac. You can you can see in her glance, the smoldering glance and the the twinkle in her eye that this is a woman madly in love with this man. So Isaac has returned to the bar. What details did I notice about that interaction? The, their little bit of trying to make sure not many people are watching. It's almost as if it's being done. They don't really care if people see, but it's being done to, satisfy a checkbox or a requirement fraternization on the job i get it yeah they don't really care as long as <laughs> uh nobody in charge sees mm -hmm. i got it as i'm topping up the drinks i'll notice that the tip jar is sitting in front of the ladies and i will pick it up and move it down in front of noah because sorry ladies i didn't mean to have that blocking you away Oh, no, no, no. It's it's fine. It's fine, really. Uh, and she'll reach into her purse and uh, kind of shove a couple of dollars in there. Oh, well, thank you. It wasn't what I meant. Of course. any stretch, you know. So. Oh, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. As it's moved. Noah had moved away from the bar itself to a corner. Okay. Um, as it's moved. Margo takes a 10 from her wallet and just stuffs it in the tip jar real quick. Ooh, high roller. Okay. You're making me yes, feel Alexis. guilty, ladies. I was I was seriously trying to move it out of your way. <laughs> yes, Alexis. What do you have? As it's moved past me, Alexis pops a 20 in there. Okay. So quite a bit of money suddenly hits the, the, the imagine jar as it goes by. Isaac will actually lean forward on the bar with his arms on it and go, is there anything else you need, Red? She's already downed her drink at this point after her phone issues. Yeah, I'm going to need another one. Same? Yeah. If you can make it or a little would you stronger. Like me to pep it up a little. Oh, pep right. it up. Pep it up. No problem. Rough day, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Imagine this well, is, uh... he will be. <laughs> oh no! Oh, 
well, taking and the court, you know. With this in conversation is not even close to being held subtly. So, the, uh, Tark, you can hear everything they're discussing. But, of course, Noah, who has stepped away from the bar to go over to a corner, is actually the one who doesn't hear the interchange right now. <laughs> Isaac will set her drink down in front of her and go, men are dogs. Some of us are just better trained than others. <laughs> I agree with that. Game, set, and match. Absolutely. I'm glad we stuffed money in there now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I T, you need anything else? Um, I could do with a refill, and I, I, I slip him a fiver and just mention that this would be the first of First of many tonight, I'm sure. Not a problem. I'll keep stacking them up. You tell me, whoa. All right. Thank you. Mr. Uh, T, you like the, uh, the the member of the A-team? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, Tiernan is my last name. So, you know. Oh. Uh, do you have a first name or is it just Tiernan? Um, well, everybody calls me Tark. Oh, Tark. Very nice to meet you. Aurora Walker, and she'll hold out her hand for a handshake. And I, I take her hand, just a shake. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. And you. <laughs> so I, I overheard you're, you're a famous author. What, what brings you down our way? Oh, not, not, I wouldn't go that far. I'm not George R. R. Martin or, or J.R. Tolkien or oh, whatever, I, but. Don't kid um, yourself, Aurora. Come on. Well, my, my wife Two is quite. Two out of three books. My wife is quite the fan. I mean, I recognized the book when, uh, when Margot really? put it out. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that doesn't happen often. It's not that popular. I mean. There's no TV show in the works. Let me put it that way. Apparently it is fun. <laughs> well. I'm just saying if there was a TV show in the works, they'd probably ruin it. Let's be real. <sighs> oh, God. Don't even remind me of something like the last few seasons of Game of Thrones. Oh. <sighs> but, yeah, I'm an, I'm an author as well. <laughs> in this odd pause awesome. that briefly happens in conversations such as these. Excuse me, go ahead, Tark. Oh, um, I, I just say, you know, I will definitely have to tell my wife about it. And uh, he, he, I do plan to make a call to her just saying I'm on the last leg of the journey. I'll be home shortly. In this pause in the conversation, you see the blonde that has been at the end of this bar this whole time getting more and more frantic looking for whoever this individual is. And she glances at her phone and you see her actually check her phone and she drops the phone and you see her immediately take a beeline over to the bathroom, leaving her phone just sitting behind. Alexis has been watching her out of the corner of her eye because she was acting suspicious. And Alexis is going to basically quickly snatch that phone. Okay, and the girl that was there doesn't pay any attention, so it's pretty easy to grab her phone. Well, she went to the restroom, so right. she dropped her phone. She Literally, it, it hit the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a look at it. Okay, and when you pick up the phone, it hasn't locked or anything. She dropped it immediately. And what you see is, of course, the capture screen that she, with her text. And you see, where are you? Are you coming? I'm waiting in the bar car. And then you see a reply. Sorry, sweetie, it's not working out. I'm not going to make that train with you. Alexis is going to pull out her own phone. And she's going to open up the notes in her phone and put in the phone number that that was sent from. Okay. Now, of course, everybody in the room notices this because there's no subtlety involved in just casually walking over and picking and up And grabbing phone. a phone and looking through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> oh, uh, it, that's 
that that that's probably her phone. Yeah, right? like yeah. You, I'm, um, something made her freak out. So, oh, yeah. But oh, I'm, I'm, if she returns, then I'll give her her phone back. Oh right. Okay. If I overhear this, I'll go. If you'd like, I can put it behind the bar. Please do. Please do. Of course. And he'll take it and set it down. And he sets it on the bar next to the present underneath the counter. Okay. Now, Noah, while this is going on, you went over to the corner. I assume you've gone over and opened your laptop and. Yeah. Um, working away. Yeah. And he would, he would then, uh, after hanging up, he would, um, open up, uh, messages and, uh, text, text the number he was given, um, to his contact and say, I'm on the train. Do you have a location where we should meet once I arrive? Okay, and send it. When you get a response, I'll let you know. Marco has just kind of realized that the box that she left on the bar is still there, and she's kind of touching it. And there's kind of this absent smile on her face. Alexis, and then she goes to put it back in her bag, and then she goes to text Nat and make sure that everything's taken care of. You get a reply back. Everything's ready. You made sure to put on the website that I will be off for the winter, right? Until February? Yeah. Uh, you, mistress is taking a holiday break. Mm. Good, good. I just didn't want to get a text from you know who begging for a session. He's been told. <sighs> Good. All of your regulars have actually been told. I'm pretty sure you won't have any problem. But if you do, you know, let us know and we'll make sure that they understand where the boundaries are. Don't worry. I'll crack the whip. And you get a reply back. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Make sure you're dressed nice when you come to pick me up. I've got us an appointment. Okay, I can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll be at the Richmond train station. I'm going to get there half hour early. Mm -hmm. Just like I like. Heart emoji. You get back a uh, devil horn emoji. And she's there and she literally... <laughs> Talking to someone special? Very. Oh, that's wonderful. She she looks over and she picks the box up and she opens it to you. It's a silver ring with sapphires. Oh my. That looks fantastic. A gift? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> It's so sweet. It's been a long time coming. Are you doing this discreetly it. or showing it kind of? Pretty, pretty obvious. <laughs> no, Isaac's going to see it and whistle. <laughs> Alexis basically gets up, grabs her purse and uh, goes to the restroom. Okay. Uh, the I'm other clear way. The other restroom, because you had to actually change cars because the one that was in this car is, is still occupied. Is occupied. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to clear away Tark's drink, put a new one up there, pour another glass of wine, and carry it over to Noah and sit down in the seat across from him and set it down and go, You okay, man? You look a little troubled. Just work. All right. You need anything? I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, I could use another glass. And he slides it over to him and goes, I thought you might. He'll hand him, uh, how, how much? Uh, don't worry about it. Just take it easy, relax a little bit. You're on a train, man. Uh, relax, enjoy the drink, and be glad you don't have to drive, right? Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. what was, what was your name? Tim catch it. Uh, my friends call me Candy. What do people who aren't your friends yet call you? <laughs> you can call me Isaac. Isaac. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, Noah. 
Good to meet you, no. And he'll offer his hand. Oh, take it. Um, sorry, don't don't mean to be rude. My head's just killing me right now. Uh, would you like an aspirin? Uh, no, no. Um, this is the medicine enough. If you know what I mean. Well, just keep in mind, it's it's an early in the day, and it can only get better. I guarantee you things are going to be good. Just relax and let us help you enjoy the ride. If you say so. And I think we'll get up, take the empty glass, and head back to the bar. Okay. And as you're coming back, did Alexis leave that other phone behind on the bar, or did she take it with her? I gave it to Isaac so he could I, put it behind okay. the bar. Yeah, I put Just it making sure. under the I, bar. I, yeah. I was making sure I remembered correctly. Because the blonde still hasn't come out of that bathroom. So, Isaac will look for a moment and wave to uh, the waitress, Angela, and point to the bathroom and just kind of you know hold up like five minutes. And she looks at you. you she knows the signals. Y'all dealt with this kind of stuff before. And she just nods her head and looks over at the bathroom. And, and as this is going on, of course, uh, Noah, you get a text. It says, Stella's, 1012 Lafayette Street, tomorrow at noon. And it's, it's a restaurant dressed nicely. Was that time again? Sorry. It is. The time is tomorrow noon at 1012 Lafayette Street. So. As everyone's settling in. Train has just cleared Spotsylvania as it's moving south. For you, Isaac, you've been on this train a number of times. You, you know the route. You know the path you're taking. Soon you'll be hitting Fort AP Hill. Though you don't get to see much of the base with the, the passenger line, but you know it's there as you go by. You can see the signs as it goes by of no trespassing. And it's not long before this blonde comes out of the, the bathroom. A second, I got to send a message real quick. And it's obvious when she comes out of the bathroom, she's been crying. And... She immediately comes over to the bar and she starts looking around like she's missing something. Isaac will walk over with a glass of wine. And, uh, Miss, I think you dropped this. And he'll set the wine down in front of her and then set her phone next to it and give her a wink. It'll be all right. Thank you, sir. I just... That bitch. I just can't, can't believe it. And I so thought Isaac things were going fine and just, this was, we were going to get will, away and, you know, do some things. And now I guess I'm going by myself. Was it a weekend thing or? Yeah, we were going to go down and, and just take the train all the way down and stop off in Georgia and just, you know, have a weekend in Atlanta and see the sights and. Now I, I guess I, I, I'm going by myself, and I should I, I should have known better than to, to get involved in long distance things. It just it just never works. It just yeah, follow your heart. Huh? It, it doesn't work. Well, there are pains, you know, and I empathize. I've had my hard times too. You know, all I can recommend is enjoy yourself. Drink that glass of wine. I'll bring you another. And you don't let that bother you. And you go have a good time yourself. Can Can I just get the bottle? I mean, just, <laughs> or do you have to just keep bringing me a glass? And I'm not allowed to leave the bottle, but uh, it'll be under the edge of the bar. Thank you, because I'm going to need it tonight. That's I, I just I will. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to need it. And it's about this point when you see Alexis return to the car she comes wandering in of course leaving you know as you come in Alexis you notice that the bathroom is now unoccupied and the blonde was talking with 
with Isaac. Um, I need from everyone perception, alertness, please. Or if you wish, you can go perception, awareness. Fundamental purposes are different purposes in the skills, but. Uh, difficulty. We will go for this one, a difficulty of seven. Nice. Uh, do we reroll tens in this game? Uh, only if you have a specialization that applies to what is uh, what you're trying to do. So for this would be a specialization for perception or alertness or awareness that you think would pertain to uh, noticing something happening. I went with awareness and I have four successes. Okay. I went with awareness as well and I also have four successes. Ten, ten, nine, seven. On awareness. Interesting. Would my insightful... Yes, you can use insightful for alertness. You can use insightful. Yes. For, alertness. for awareness, can I use the detail oriented? Um, awareness doesn't have detail oriented. That was no, alertness. that was perception. Oh, perception, yes. Okay. Awareness Perce- is for those who do not understand uh, the difference. Alertness is for noticing events that happen. Awareness is generally used for more supernatural or oh, okay. otherworldly things. Then use. But okay. I will let you use either one. Okay. And depending on what you rolled, we'll, you'll get different results. Okay. Yeah. Perception. I got four on alertness. Four on alertness. Pardon. For me, perception has the insightful, not... Um, yeah, alert. it is. It is. Yes, but then I, you can use it. I was just wondering if I had, if I was able to use the, uh, the detail-oriented detail yep. for my perception. But either way, I, I decided to go with awareness. You went with awareness? So mm-hmm. four on awareness from Alexis, four on alertness for Aurora. Five on alertness. Oh, alert. Wow. Five two and two. Alertness. Okay. One. Awareness. How about, uh, on awareness. How about you, Tark? Um, two and a one. So one success. One success. I, I see your one. dice are rolling as well as yep. usual. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that man a dice tower. <laughs> <laughs> as Alexis returns to the cart, you notice that the the ticket guy is right behind her and he enters the cart behind her. Now, as he he cuts through the cart and he goes to the other side of the car and he goes to leave, he turns and looks back at everybody. Now, for those who had alertness, they've rolled four. Of course, that's high enough. One's not enough. Five is, though. You notice when he looks back, he's got a grimace on his face of some kind. Now for the awareness of Alexis, I believe she's the only one who rolled high aware, or awareness. When he looks back, you could swear for a second that you see fire dancing in his eyes. And then he turns and exits the cart on the far side from where he came in, which is the side you had entered, heading up towards the front of the the train. Weird. He looked really pissed off. Must not be a good day. I wonder if he just had to deal with somebody hopping or something like that. What's his name? What's his name? And and he's the usual... He's the usual guy. Yeah, Ralph. You've known Ralph for a number of years. You've never seen... Of course, you didn't notice the grimace or anything, but you've known him for a number of years. He seems like a pleasant guy. He's always on doing this run. Yeah, you know, getting to the holidays, I'm sure Ralph just has some stuff on his mind. Oh, I hope he has a good holiday at least. I Red, sit, you're catching flies. Yeah, I sat. I sit down at um, a different seat. I grab my drink and sit down in a different seat, and I kind of signal for the bartender to come over. Uh, I'll be back in a moment. Make my way over to her. Then actually slide into the seat and just kind of lean on the table. And, and what I kinda, can I do for you? I kind of lean in a little closer to him. I'm like, you know, I do this trip every year. I've seen the staff on this train so many times. Have you ever noticed anything off about him? No, not really. He's a pretty genuine guy. I will say, normally uh, does a high five when he goes by, but I figure uh, he's distracted. You know, we ran a little late 
getting going this morning, this evening, so. Hmm. Why? What's up? There was a look to his eyes that just seemed a bit off to me. So you go for the look in people's eyes, huh? And he'll just kind of, you know, broaden his eyes a little bit. Funny. I know you have a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> the, I, I notice details. It's what I do. Well, and it just seemed um, a little I off. I have noticed you. I've noticed you on the train before. I didn't, don't know your name and, you know, definitely don't know you. Well, it's Mr. T. But, uh, Alexis Langley, and I reach out a hand to him. Uh, Isaac Candy. Pleasure to meet you, Alexis. Pleasure as well, Isaac. So, you seem to have a couple of phone calls that left you a little, uh, I don't know, it was a cross between <laughs> unhappy and elated. Not elated. Satisfaction. Mm. Business yeah, when, when your lying, cheating sack of shit of a husband, after 25 years, decides to get his secretary pregnant. And oh, then he has no. the gall to be surprised when I serve him with the divorce papers stating I'm going to take him for everything. <laughs> Excellent. That is awesome. I cannot... St Men are dogs. <laughs> As Some you of said. us are better trained. Uh, and, uh, that that's still left to be decided, you know, giving me the eyes when your <laughs> girlfriend's serving tables. Uh, I guess you haven't noticed the way she leans in, too. Sorry. <laughs> well, about I understand the nature. I understand the nature, but I've already given you like 50 in tips, so you're good. So <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not asking for more, but I will ask, do you need more? What can I get for you? I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to get drunk. I actually have plans to meet up with a friend of mine. Theo and her wife are going to be going out for to celebrate their anniversary tonight, and they wanted me to tag along. Well, you get to celebrate your anniversary. They get to sell their anniversary. Oh, Theo's oh, going to be on. thrilled. She's hated, she hated Jason from the beginning. But... <laughs> Jason, I've never liked that name. I've never <laughs> met a Jason who wasn't an asshole. Uh, just took me 25 years I think the only, I think the only name worse than that's Dave. <laughs> so, but yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. You sure I can't? I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you. All right. Well, if you do need anything, just wave a hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, either I or my girlfriend will... Uh, <laughs> Come help you out. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell the higher hey, ups. <laughs> hey, life will get better. I'm happy for you. I'm sad for your situation, but I'm happy for you. I hope you find somebody who's worthy of you. Oh, I'm sure I'm worthy. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you are. You just need to find somebody who deserves you. Mm, we'll see. And he'll tap his hand on the table a couple of times and stand up. And as you go to walk back towards the bar, you've done this run a number of times. You know right about now you're leaving APO Hill, but the rhythm is off in the train. Not quite sure why, you're not quite sure how, but you've, you know the feel of the train. You know how it's supposed to feel. Something is off. Can't quite put your finger on it. I walk back, I walk back to the house phone behind the bar mm -hmm. and pick it up and kind of turn and I, I hit for the, hit for the engineer. No response. Hmm. That's odd. Um, if you would like. I'll buzz, uh, I'll buzz back a couple other compartments and just see if anybody picks up. You get somebody at the caboose. You get the various uh, comfort stations, you know, scattered out because there's there's actually a dining car, but mm -hmm. nothing at the engineer at the very front of the train. Now I will let you roll because you've done this a few times. You can go um, intelligence 
You can go Enigmas or Investigation, either one you want. Uh, the difficulty in this is actually pretty easy. It's only a five. Because you, you know Train. Right. I'll go with Intelligence and Investigation. Okay. And what did you say? Five? Five is the target. Difficulty of five. Uh, that will be four successes. You 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 know what the problem is. The train is going much too fast for this section of track. It is definitely accelerating. You can feel the shift, and it's moving faster than it should. Uh, you picked it up based on the, the clack clack as it hits the gaps in the rails at various points. It's a lot faster pace than it should be. Um, everybody okay in the car? Um, afraid it feels a little rough this evening. Be careful your drinks. Don't want anybody to spill anything. And I'll make my way over to, uh, the waitress, okay. Angela. And, yep. uh, um, Angela, you, feel that? you feel it? Yeah. That, that. Read my mind again. Yes. Can I tell by the tenor of his voice if something sounds wrong? I will, uh, you're close enough to hear that there is something, you didn't hear it in his voice, but you heard it in hers. Okay. I, mean, I guess I meant more in the, the, is everything okay? Like the, well, it, that, the, way that she said, like a, the way she said at the same time, you know, sorry, I'm talking about what he said before he went to the girlfriend. Yeah. You are far enough away. You, which part to Alexis? No, 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 no. When he announced, if everybody's okay, oh, watch no. out for your drink. Like, you that seem like a, no, a, that a, one he didn't give anything away yet okay. because he, he's used to hiding certain things that way. Okay. okay. But you definitely heard the alarm in Angela's voice. Okay. He heard it, but no one else did? No, because they were on that far side of the, okay, gotcha. the train. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I'll look at Angela and kind of lean in and whisper to her, <clears throat> um, I'll stay here. Um, I tried to call the engineer. I didn't get anything. Uh, do me a favor. Let's just head up to the front and see if there's any kind of an issue. Because it's yeah. very rare that they won't answer the line. Yeah, Jake always answers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, get up there and then give me a buzz back. Okay? Okay, yeah. Um, All right. Then she kind of has a scared look on her eye as she exits the car and starts moving forward. in the same route that you saw Ralph take, actually. Did Alexis notice her countenance when she walked past her? Perception alertness. Thank you. Um, because you've established Alexis to be watching everything that goes on, I will give you a difficulty of six, which is the standard difficulty. Now, since I'm a regular rider of this particular section of uh, track and train, would I, would I have noticed anything? I will let you roll um, intelligence technology. That is five successes. Five for you. You noticed that she has a panicked look as she was exiting. I, I sent you a message uh, privately. Yes, you can. Go ahead. You go ahead and roll yours, uh, Tark, and then we'll let Alexis deal with what she... I'm going to get up and follow her. Okay. And what's the difficulty on this? For you... You're not, you've ridden a train a lot, but then again, you're not specialized in trains. I will still go with six, though. Six. Okay, that's uh, three. Okay. Three yeah, something's off. You just, you don't know what it is. It's something doesn't feel right with three. Um, you know something's wrong, though. The train doesn't have that same vibration feel that you're used to feeling. It's feeling higher pitched, like it's vibrating faster or harder. And Alexis, you see, everyone sees Alexis, of course, get up and beeline. And Alexis gets to the door. And when she puts her hand on the door, you feel the train suddenly lurch. Everyone is shoved backwards as the train accelerates and you feel the G-forces pushing you back as it picks up even more speed. <laughs> what the hell? 
Yeah, what's going on? Everyone brace yourselves. Every, everybody, uh, let's just just get your drinks on the floor. Just just throw them off the tables. Uh, um, I'm sure everything's fine, but I'll clean up the mess. Uh, just everybody sit down, please. Nobody in the restroom. Aurora is going to uh, pick up her phone and text her, and a group text her son and her uh, wife and say, there's a, something a little odd about the train. There might be trouble, so might be home a little bit later. If, if need be, order pizza. Okay. Anyone else? Text what is everyone Nats. else's reaction? Alexis is not listening to Isaac. She's going through the door. Okay. You start to pull the door open. I'm going to start texting um, to my wife. Uh, sorry. Sorry if I sp- sounded cold uh, earlier. I love you. Okay. Anyone else have an action they want to explain why this train is lurching suddenly and obviously um, gaining Isaac's, speed? Isaac's going to head to the bar for the house phone, waiting okay. for that call. I think Aurora would have put I love you on the end of that, too. So, just in Anyone case. else? Nat, oh. uh, I'm texting Nat saying I'm going to be late. I love you. Okay, and that leaves Tark. And I text my wife just saying, seems to be trouble. Oh, good. And you get an odd feeling that you didn't expect in the train. And it feels as if time itself is slowed down for an instant. You can feel almost a sense of weightlessness for a brief second. As the train comes to an abrupt stop. And then, of course, you feel inertia take hold. And there's a crashing noise and screaming and smoke and your vision fades. And this is where we will take a break. everyone. (sighs) And we will be back in 10 minutes, please enjoy the break. And we will see what becomes of this group of travelers from heading to Richmond. Step is hopeless living. 
Welcome back. Before the break, of course, we had six travelers on a train to Richmond. Right before the break, something bad was happening. This is where we're going to pick up this scene. And in the fog of this darkness, each of you feels pain, of course, at first. The most pain you felt in your life. You smell smoke. You hear screams, wrenching metal, noises of trees breaking. And then... Each of you realize that you can see all of a sudden, but everything looks odd. There's the only way to explain it is like somebody's put smoke covered glass in front of your eyes. But at the same time, you hear the voices of those you've loved, the voices of those you've known. You see bits and pieces of them. Like faces briefly drifting to you in this, on the other side of the smoky glass. The pain is gone. Though all sensation is gone as well. You don't feel much of anything at the moment. So I'm going to go around the table and ask each player what you are doing. We will start with Isaac. Um, I'll look at myself seeing disheveled me, which makes me a little uncomfortable because I like that professional edge. And I'm going to notice on my arm that the gang tattoo that I had had removed is on my arm. Yeah, you've you noticed the clothes you were wearing. When you look down, they're different. But this glass, this opaque thing between you and what you're looking around and seeing does not block your view of your own body. And you can see your clothes are different. Your tattoo's back. I immediately look around. Where's everybody from the bar? Where's the bar? You catch a glimpse. Vangela's face behind the glass. You see her son. You see your mother, your sister. Their face is briefly in there and then they fade away. Mommy? And now I'm going to ask What are you doing? That is going to be uh, Margo. Goes looking around. She. And for you as well, your clothes are not the same as what you wore. Where am I? Where's everyone? You see glimpses of your husband, clients. Your sister. Many faces from your past, your present. You don't see anyone that you were on the train with as they move beyond this smoky thing blocking your view. Almost like a sheet pulled over your eyes that you're seeing through. Try and reach out and touch. There is something there. You can feel it. But it gives. It's not hard. It moves. It Mm. shifts. The fuck? This isn't right. Noah. How do you appear when you look at yourself as you're caught behind this odd thing? 
less hungover. It's the first thing. He, and he, he doesn't look as weary, at least like his face is not the bags under his eyes, just the tired look. Um, looks a little more professional, buttoned up shirt like he was before. Um, earlier in his profession. Um, and for you, you see your wife crying. You actually see bits of your wedding day, some of the happiest memories in your life. You catch a glimpse of the day that, of your failure, of the loss of prestige you had, of losing the name you had built for yourself. You see in it in bits and pieces. They drift out of this miasma in front of you and then drift away again. And there's voices calling. You hear your wife call for you and say, I love you. And you even hear a voice that you swear is hers say, I had a dream that tragedy was coming. I wish you hadn't have gone. I'm just going to look around, like, see where the voice is coming from. Um, it's coming from beyond this thing, this thing that blocks your view, this odd, opaque sheet, perhaps, or a curtain, or glass. Even that shifts as to what it appears to be. It's not stable. It's not always the same. There's almost a dreamlike quality to everything going on around you. Where am I? Alexis. Immediately when she opened her eyes, she went to touch herself. And when she couldn't feel herself, she looked down. You feel yourself. Okay. But you don't, you don't feel pain, but you don't feel Do, good. You fe when you, But I wouldn't feel the sensations. It's not the same. It's an right. odd sensation. It is both a hyper sensation, but a deadened sensation at the same time. It's hard to explain in a lot of ways. It's both simultaneous. Because that's different. I look down. I haven't worn this dress in 10 years. And then I look ahead. And you see bits and pieces of your life. You see your husband introducing you to his new secretary. You see yourself in some ways. You see yourself going over pieces of paper, information you had you were coming to Richmond to give to somebody. Important information you had dug up. You see, of course, your mother. And the ice capades and the nutcracker. And all the various events you've done over the years, because you've done many, not just the Nutcracker, you've done many events with your mother. And it's a hot. You see your lawyer? And these images shift like a dream. Fading in and out. Calling to you. Sometimes to each other. Where are my children? And she's going to lunge at this whatever it is and she is going to beat at it claw at it try to break it any way she can okay Tark the very first thing you see when you can see again is a conference you just recently left where the DOD had unveiled something that Looked awful lot like what you've designed and done research on. Actually, it looked exactly gave, like it. Who gave them that? Who leaked my research? What, what? What's going on? Wait, I was on the train. Why am I in my lab outfit? And you see your wife 
behind this thing blocking your view, calling out to you. You see co-workers, people you've known for years, all fading in and out, in and out. It is an odd thing. You see the picture of your grandmother briefly. And then you actually remember your grandmother. You see times you spent when you were a kid. And you can even hear her voice say, it'll be all right, Tarky. It'll be all right. And now we come to Aurora. What? She's going to uh, just start looking around frantically. She doesn't know why she's in her uh, uh, leather jacket and the outfit she wore to kind of feel badass. What? Where? Where am I? Where? Where am I? You're caught, as with the others, behind some odd thing obscuring part of your vision. It's You can still see bits and pieces beyond it, but nothing looks right. You don't see the train. You don't see the wilderness or a town. Uh, You do see briefly your wife. You see your adopted son. Do you even catch a glimpse of a house of all things? A house you know is yours. You see yourself on the day that your first manuscript was accepted and you were handed a check. What? What? What what is this? What? (sighs) She'll kind of start hyperventilating a little bit and pushing her hands against the... the And there's a barrier. It's there. It moves. It shifts. It gives way. It's not 100% solid. But you don't can't put your hand through it. You can't force beyond it for some reason. But you know it's there. Let let me out. What? And now we're going to flash back to Isaac. I do believe Isaac is muted. Yes, Isaac is. Which makes sense for him, because he's just sitting there, looking at his arm, and looking at his clothes, and just trying to figure out, why am I here? Totally just oblivious to what's going on around. You know, he saw the faces, but he is more focused on himself, and what what he's feeling, why things feel different. It's an odd feeling. Why his body's changed. It's a very odd feeling. It's, as I said before, it's both more sensation but less sensation. At the same time, it's indescribable in a lot of ways. You can see, though, beyond this thing blocking you, your sister reaching a hand towards you. Come with me. Come with me. And she's motioning. And with that, he will try to just step forward and I guess bash his face into whatever. And as you're pushing, you see her get closer and closer. And then a hand holds yours. But it's not a small hand. It's a much larger hand. And you hear a bell toll in the distance one time. One single loud ring of a bell. Margot, what are you doing? I'm pushing and pulling, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. This isn't right. This isn't where I'm supposed to be. I was going to be happy. 
and you see your sister's face briefly, but you hear her words clearly. Why am I always to blame? I didn't do it. You did it. That's not what I meant, Ava. It's not. I'm trying to push. You're trying to push? And you hear a bell toll, muted, far away. But you hear it, and it rings one time, in a dull noise. And as you're pushing and trying to move, the face materializes behind this, whatever it is. You don't recognize it. It's possible it's somebody from your past, but you don't recognize him at all. Gray hair, long beard. If you want to get out of here, Missy, we might want to do it quick. All right. Who the fuck are you? (laughs) But she's trying to clamor while she's talking. And he steps closer and you catch an eye of something in his hand. You're not quite sure what it is. And there's that thing blocking your vision starts to split away. And now we're going to cut to Noah. Noah, you are here, and you also hear the bell ring. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? You cut out on my end. Okay, um, you're here as well, and you also hear that same bell went ring. Some muted bell rings in the distance. It's not close, you know this. Can't be close. But you hear it. Do I see anyone else around me? You don't see anyone on your side of it. But you do see somebody approaching this shadowy thing blocking you. You haven't seen this person in years. It was actually your editor at the time of your failure. Hello? I'm just going to keep going in that and in the direction I think the bell is coming from. As you move. Hey, hey you there. Hi, you're walk away from me. You're a strong one. Let's let's see what we can do here. I, I suspect you want out of there, don't you? No shit. What the hell is this? <laughs> You'll find out. Hey, just, just quit struggling so much and you can feel something pushing you. Um, as this individual gets closer, you see him getting closer, but you can feel like being pushed, being touched. You don't see hands doing it, but everywhere you feel the touch, this this thing that's blocking your view is moving in and, and touching you. Can I clean what he's trying to do if I can make it easier you or can't assist see, in any way? You can't see clear enough, but then, of course, like with the others, this thing starts to part and tatter and fall to pieces in front of your eyes. Alexis. Now we come back to you. I keep repeating that I'm got to get to my children and I am fight. I'm fighting against this barrier with everything I have. And the oddity is you see your father's grave kind of materializes in a lot of ways in front of you. But there's a man perched on it you don't recognize. Gray beard. He has a hat of some kind on, but you can't make out details through this, whatever it is. Really? Either help or quit taunting me. Now, Missy, I'm not taunting anything. Don't don't worry about what you see. Don't believe any of that. Just give me a minute. And the figure moves over. And you actually get a glimpse of the hat. It's a very old train engineer's hat. 
you've seen it in old movies. Though nobody wears that style hat anymore. They've gone much, you know, you'd call it vintage. You'd find it at an antique store. And then this thing around you begins to crumble and fall apart. Tark, um, we are on you now. Okay. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying. You've to, heard the bell. You heard the bell ring quite a while ago, by the way. Right. Um, I'm trying to use my intellect to like. I'm not where I was. I know I'm not where where I was just a few moments ago. Like, where Where am I? What What's going on? Um. So we're going to go down that route. What does Tark think happened? Well, he, he's he's putting it together. I mean, he he re- remembers the train lurching, then the pain, and then suddenly here he's like, "Am I am I dead? What what happened? What, what, what? This isn't what's supposed to happen." Are you willing to burn a willpower? Yes. I'm not going to tell you for what. Okay. Okay. Spend one temporary willpower. And then roll your permanent willpower against a difficulty of four. Is that including the one I just spent or not? That it's permanent. So you roll whatever your permanent value the boxes is. Temporary are your does not permanent. count. Right. The circles That's are okay. your temporary. Yeah, your temporary doesn't as you use temporary, it doesn't change your permanent willpower. So your willpower rolls will always be your permanent willpower. Okay. This is not vampire where as you use <laughs> willpower, you get less. Your your roles for willpower will always be the same. And the difficulty here was? The difficulty is four. four. Oh, okay. Well, that, that helps a lot. Four. You had four. That helps a whole lot. Gain four pathos. First, that puts you to nine, if I'm correct, right? That's right. Yes. You push and pull and think. And when you think, am I dead? That startling realization slams home in your head and you realize you have to be dead. And with an effort of will, you break free of this thing, this whatever's blocking you. You just, it just shatters under your force of will alone and comes apart, leaving you standing at the obvious wreckage of a train. But whereas when before this happened, you were passing green trees and grass. I mean, it was dark, but you could see it. Now, there's an odd glow to everything. You can see way too well for the time of night it is. All the trees are blackened, dying. The grass is nothing but scrub. The train that you see in bits and pieces beside you is pitted, rusted. All the metal twisted but also aged. And you see several glows of light around you. You can almost feel the mood of these lights. You feel pain from some, terror from others. And as you watch some of them, these images of light wink out and go away. But you do see a man with a beard Huddle over someone. He's got a long beard, and he's obviously got an old train engineer's hat. And if you didn't know any better, he would be, you would swear he's helping the lady that you heard was named Alexis on the train. But she's doesn't look the same as she did. Of course, neither do you. True. And now we go to Aurora. I'm clawing at whatever is in front of me, feeling a sort of panic mixed with uh, claustrophobia. Um, I'm almost screaming, please, please, somebody help me, please. I need to get back to my son, my wife, please, please, please. What, what the hell happened? And there's a, bell that rings also in yours you can hear it it's muffled but it was there a clear chime one chime help anyone please 
And, of course, Tark, you see this old man get up after Alexis is standing up, and he looks at you and kind of cocks his head, and then he, you see him rush over to what looks like almost a cocoon of all things, if there was ever person-sized cocoons. Because that is the size of what you see. And he reaches over and you see uh, something silver glinting in his hand. And there's a face hovering over you, Aurora. And it is your wife. You see her hovered over you. And as her hand reaches out to your face, you can see it clearly through this thing blocking your view. Shut up. This thing Shut shatters up, in front of you. And it's actually an old man with a long beard. <laughs> I want to check. Okay. Now calm down, Missy. Calm down, calm down. You'll be all right. Where the hell am I? Well, I mean, you're exactly where you were, but you're not where you... It's a difficult thing to explain, and we don't really have time. And each of you can hear him at this point talking. You are all standing next to the wreckage of a train, rusted, pitted. I mean, it looks like it's been outside in the weather for 100, 200 years. Even though it just crashed, there's fire burning. And you see people that are, it's obvious it's people, glowing with an odd glow. And you can feel pain off some, fear off others. Oddly enough, you feel some that feel joy. And some of them you see, it just winks out. They're no longer glowing. Just gone. Nothing there. And this old man says, you heard the bell? We we need to get out of here. We've got somewhere to be. What? What, what the hell does What's the bell the mean? What bell? And he points. You see that way? And he points and it's kind of to the south. And you can see to the south a storm cloud in this otherwise oddly glowing night. Except it's not like a storm cloud any of you have ever seen. And you realize now that you can see better than you think you've ever seen. I mean, it's nighttime, but it's that glow and everything is almost perfectly clear, even though it is shrouded and, and slightly dark. And this storm cloud doesn't look like rain. It doesn't look like a storm you would understand. It's almost a wall of things you can't see beyond moving your direction. I I can't leave. I have to find Angela. But, and I turn I, and start heading towards the train. He's like, you better get out of here now because this is going to hit us. And you don't want to be caught. If she made it, if she made it, she, you won't find her. But if she didn't make it, we'll find her later. We got to get out of here. And I, I can't him look just over. leave these people. He goes, shit, shit. Death marks are here. Shit. And you see him look over, and when you look that direction, you see they're not glowing. They're like this old man. They're there. But there's a group of three or four of them, and they're heading straight towards the wreckage, striding with purpose. Why do they look like you? Um, Because we're all dead. But they're coming to grab some people to sell them to the damn forges. So if you don't want to become... A brick, a stick, a damn coin. You might want to come with me. Come on, Missy. Come on. Just no time to argue. Okay. Follow me. But Angela, fine. fine. But wh how? How are we dead? What the There's a lot to explain. But either that's they're gonna get us, or that storm's gonna hit us. And you don't want to be out when a maelstrom comes through. Trust me. I got a place we can go to. But we've you've got to come now. Come on. I'm, uh, I'm so I'm so glad you're alive. Don't don't listen to him. You're not dead. You're not dead. I mean, you should follow him, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. You're very much alive. Who, 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 who the hell? It, it doesn't matter right now. You just got to get out of here. Okay, 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 okay. But don't listen to him. Whatever you do, okay. you are not dead. Okay, I, I, all right, all right, I'm not dead, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. No, go, get yourself together. And It'll be Aurora, okay, it'll be okay. 
Aurora starts running. Now, everyone, of course... With the man, presumably. Everyone, of course, hears Aurora's side of the conversation. Mm-hmm. But you don't know who she was talking to. You don't know what she's talking about. She's had a conversation just now with somebody. But the old man doesn't seem to have noticed. He just starts walking. You don't can't really tell. Well, guessing on the track, the way the track was in the direction of the train, you think he's going kind of a northeast kind of direction? Alexis's head is on a swivel. She is taking in everything. And he gets about 20 feet away and he, you see As him she's following. Yeah, and he's, he's making sure everybody's following. <laughs> and you all hear something in the distance. You don't know what it is. You can hear it, though. It's a, a wailing, a cry, a scream. An odd combination of all of them. Howling of a wind. Or howling of somebody screaming. But you hear it. And it's coming from the south. Noah's looking at the, the man leading us skeptically, still following along but he's looking for any signs of deceit or um, something's not right. He's looking more at the people than the, the, him, the person, than the surroundings in general. Now, having ridden trains a long time there, uh, Isaac, um, you know, he's wearing a traditional engineer's outfit, but not one that's been seen since maybe the 50s or 60s. You've seen pictures of the same outfit on the walls in places, but... Not recently. Certainly not. It's not an Amtrak uniform. You can tell that. Well, recognizing as well as I can Alexis from the train, uh, I'm going to grab her arm and go, you've got to help me find Angela. She's still on the train. I don't know if we can do anything right now. We have to get out of here. There's something going on back there. I know, and we're leaving those people in it. The rest of you coming. I take his hand and pull him with me. What what are you doing? We will come back. And you hear a voice scream from the direction of those three men. Thomas, you know that's ours. You know we're going to come for him, right? Who the fuck are they? Thomas just... (sighs) Come on, I told you we got to run. We got to run. We can't hang here. Damn it, now now they're going to find me. I don't know about you, but I'm going with him. Mm -hmm. Come on now, Isaac. We'll come back. Tark. Come on. We got to go. Here we're going. I don't see need to hang around. Follows this man. And Isaac reluctantly being drugged by Alexis in a lot of ways. Looking back. As long as she's got my hand, I will, I will go. And you're looking back constantly to, to see what's going on behind it. I would like you to roll. Let me find the exact roll, because this is not one we've done yet. This is a new roll for you. I would like you to roll. I got to find the right chart. Give me one second. That's always new when we do this the first time. You're going to do a life sight roll. I would like you to use perception plus empathy. At a difficulty of five, please. Just him or all of us? Just him. Okay. Does my specialization of truths fit into this in any way? No, not for this one. What was this? The difficulty is five. I couldn't hear you. Difficulty of five. Thank you. Uh, that will be one success. One success. Okay. 
you look back at these glowing, whatever they are, but you don't make sense of who they are, you can't really tell who's who in this, from the few you can see. Um, but you see a lot of them glow briefly or barely glowing and winking out as you guys are running away. And as you run away, it, the noises are getting louder. And the six of you follow this old man that now you know is named Thomas off into the woods. And as you're moving, you can hear sirens in the distance coming this way. And you can still hear those howls getting louder, those noises, that moan. And as you move, you're running towards the sound, uh, actually, of the fire trucks and the ambulances. And this old man, for obviously being old, is a spry little chap. He's moving at a good pace, but he keeps checking back on everybody. Are they to still make following sure us? They're not going to follow us. You, you, we'll be all right. We just, we'll be all right until they come looking for us. But they're not going to follow us. They're going to grab what they can and, and get into cover before this maelstrom hits. What do you mean, grab what they can? And they're reapers, and they, they're here looking for people to sell. Hold on. Are you a reaper? <laughs> well, I mean, technically, yeah, but I'm not here to sell you. I'm I'm trying to protect y'all from people like them. So, Missy, just just you, you don't have much choice. You can either follow me, or you can deal with that storm coming. But when the maelstrom hits, the last place you want to be is outside. Can I do a bullshit check? Yes, you can. <laughs> I think that's. Is there an official role for bullshit check? Probably not. But I will let I you have, roll. Could I do use like investigation with my deductive? That actually is um pretty useful. Yeah, we'll go um perception investigation. I'll let okay. you do that. Can I'm trying I use, to deduce. You can use deduction. And I have insightful with perception. A double specialization won't help. Okay. Okay. But eight dice will. Uh, eight dice will. Yes, it will. What was the, uh, sorry, what was the difficulty? I will go with a difficulty on this one of eight because of the, the stress of the moment and what's happening. But you only need one success. Um, three successes. Three successes? I mean, you're not 100% sure, but it makes sense that he did protect you from these guys that obviously said, you know, that you're theirs, like he, they own you. And if he really wanted to mess with you, he could have left you there or left you to the storm that you know nothing about. But he's obviously very upset about coming. Are you are you taking us back to our bodies? Um. Missy, your bodies are gone. They're they're um, husks. They're empty. There's nothing there. It's. I can explain it. Let's just get inside for a minute. And I'll explain it. All right. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This is fucking weird. This is a fucking weird dream. D does anybody find it odd that we're following Thomas, the train engineer, somewhere? You said is this it. a fucking I joke? I was, I was thinking it. I, I was thinking it too. What the? Alexa starts laughing hysterically. She is fucking cracked. And the guy looks back. <laughs> uh, uh, the name's O'Sullivan, but that's that's just we're almost there. We're almost there, and you see a road ahead of you, and there's a building on the other side of the road. It's two story house of some kind, and it looks pretty run down. There's a sign up front that you can't quite read yet. And as you're getting closer, though, a fog bank is rolling in that wasn't there before. Should we avoid the fog? Uh, you're going to have to... Just, the fog won't be in the building. Just we got to get inside the building. You'll be all right. And the fog, when you're you're feeling it, it's... There's an oddity to the fog. It doesn't feel like any fog you've felt before. It feels almost alive. 
Great. There's a great. malice We're following in the Thomas the train engineer to tiny town station. This is this is this is insane. Come on, folks, let's go. You know a lot about Thomas the train engine. What? You never had kids? I mean, he's worked on a train for a long time. I'm not terribly surprised. I'm assuming you've worked on a train a long time as a tray bar, a train bartender. Anyhow, but let's do the small talk in a second. Let's get inside, please. Yeah, he's probably got it loaded up with people that are going to eat us in there or something. Come on, Tark. Get your fucking ass in gear. I'm in here too and I don't want to die. Do you understand me? Yeah. Get fucking moving, you lazy good for nothing. Let's go, people. Let's go. We're almost there. And as you approach this building, this sign, you can read it out front. The paint's weathered on it. It's chipped. It's damaged. The sign says, two frogs on a bike. Antiques. <laughs> Hanover, Virginia. And Thomas leads you through the front door. And as you come in this, this building, you're not even sure how it's standing. It is, in all sense of the word, falling apart. The walls, the windows are cracked. There's no paint left. It looks like any step in it will cause it to fall. And as soon as you follow him in the building, he slams the door shut. We made it just in time. We'll be all right now. In here? Really? Trust me, it's it's better than it looks. You, you'll understand. I feel um, like we're about to get murdered. Noah's kind of going to start padding around looking for a notepad to start taking notes. And as you're uh, padding around, what comes, to, um, you find no, there's more. something in your pocket. You find there's your voice recorder. It's in your pocket. Nothing else? That's what you find in your pocket. Your voice recorder. No paper. Very odd, though, to have your voice recorder. He's gonna. He's not gonna take that out. Okay. He's just gonna try and and the, keep an eye out. The noises are getting louder outside. Now, what is everyone doing while you're trapped in this building? Alexis is let go of Isaac's hand. Okay, your Tark's gonna ask Thomas what's going on. Alexis let go of Thomas or Isaac's hand. Got it. And she's starting to wander around the room they're in. And she's muttering fuck under her breath the whole time. Margo's looking around. Seriously? And the fog you notice isn't in the building. You don't know how the windows are keeping it out. But it's not in the building. But there's stuff moving in the fog. Why do we look different? Why are, we, why are our clothes different? This is some kind of weird fever dream. This is uh, where I, I, I must be. I must be in a coma. This is. This sense. If you were in a coma, you wouldn't be here. You look different because this is how you look. I mean, it, I've never had it really explained to me, but it has to do with how we think of ourselves. You see, I, I look like this because this is what was important to me. This was what I did. This is who I am. Thomas O'Sullivan, train engineer, Pacific Railroad. So Noah's gonna Noah's gonna look at all the others, and uh, yeah. he's gonna turn to Margo. Interesting, and turn away. Go fuck yourself. Not the first so, time I've heard that. When when do we meet Mister Mayor? Uh, you know, I don't even have a clue what you're talking about. I, this Thomas the Tank Engine thing seems kind of odd to me. It's a kid's show. It's a cartoon. With a train named Thomas. That talks. Technically, it's stop motion, but you know. Well, whatever. Semantics. Oh, thank you, Mr. Genius. Jeez. It's been a while since my kids watched children's television. You know, Thomas, you, you're you not dressed like any modern train engineer, but... What's the deal with that? But no, no, I, I died in '53. As a matter of fact, that I've I've been around a while. You might say. You know. Oh, I, how fucking astute of you! Did you put that one together yourself, Tar? 
<laughs> well, you hear that hmm. voice. It's interesting. You've yeah. never heard a voice in your head talk like that, but it's a voice talking. And he just carries on like, you know, nothing else. He's, I was I was there for the celebratory ride when we just linked up the Pacific Railroad over in Missouri. And there's there is a problem, you see. Hear what? You, what? Just I mean, I hear, you, I hear what's outside. Uh, okay. Oh, you hear the voices already? Oh. Okay, Sonny. We'll have to talk about that later, I think. I don't wait. think we want to talk about that here. Wait, so okay. when you say fi- when you say 53, you mean 1853? No, 1953. I was part of... We just built the new junction through, and I was on the celebratory ride. I was the engineer. I may have made a mistake about uh, we were running late, and we wanted to get there on time because it was a big news thing, and I may have. I saw this episode. Yeah, the train was running late, and Thomas got a new face on, and this is no. no now, Sonny, we died. I, I mean, I think there's like 40 people killed, and I was one of them. Um, big disaster. Uh, You've not heard of Gasconda Bridge? Uh, you probably would. Uh, what the fuck people... is with trains? Noah's going to get away from the Thomas the Tank Engine talk and go to um, uh, Alexis. You have you have to calm down. I, I know that sounds crazy, but please. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. We died. Maybe this could be some strange I don't mask up you pathetic bitch now he has everything he ever wanted you are such a fucking failure And now I'm hearing the voice, too. What do you mean? Oh, that's a voice I've heard before. You know, this... When you hear yourself in your own head, when you're doubting yourself... That just spoke to me. I mean, I Fantastic. Like, I'd be careful giving listening to voices down here. Speaking of voices, those moans that are outside, you're hearing voices now in those out in that fog and that well, now it's more of a storm, but it's not rain. You're not quite sure what's hitting. Sometimes it glows, sometimes it looks like blood, sometimes it looks like rain. Sometimes it looks like bits and pieces of debris or sand. It's ever shifting, but there are voices. And you hear them calling help. Save me. You must come out and come to me. And I need everyone to roll. Let me find the right roll here real quick. I need you to roll perception plus empathy. The difficulty is six. Oh, that's a good one for me. (laughs) I assume I'm not... Can I use my deep motivations? No, not for this one. Does insightful work for this? Yes, I will. I uh, will allow insightful for this one. Okay, no deep motivations. Three successes. Is it five and above, or above five? Since five's the target, it would be at six is the target. Six, six and above. Oh, I'm six sorry, above. I thought I heard you say five. Yeah, six and above. Six, six and three. Thank you. Three. And one, two, three. And one. So everyone got some successes at least. Good. You hear the voices and they sound like people you know. You hear family members, loved ones. And it's real close to them. It's real close. You could almost swear it was them. But it's off slightly. Just little things giving it away. But you can tell who, whatever it is, is using their voice trying to get you to step out of this building. Trying to call you into the storm 
Who's what are those? Who are who are they? Mask up. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Is that Natalie? You heard? Is she out there? Is she calling to you? The voices, what, uh, you're talking about what is out there? Don't, don't listen to those. They're trying to get you to come out. You, you don't want to go out there. Trust me. Why is the fog trying to lure us out? But it's not really fog. Oh, um, I know that. I have a voice in my head. Oh, the, we'll have to, I don't really want to talk about that with what's out there right now because we try not to, it's bad luck to talk about the shadow when the specters are outside. What you're hearing are called, they're, they're specters. They're like, they're dead, but they've lost. And they just want you to... Lost to what? Is this a game? Oh, it's a game, Missy. But it's not the game you think. Uh, they lost um to Oblivion. They've lost to the end, destruction. They're, they're, they, they've lost what drove them as, as people. And now they're just... Monsters. We'll talk more about it when it calms down, but all I can tell you right now, we need to stay in the building and just stay here. As long as we stay in here and we don't get too loud or go outside, they won't even find us. Hopefully. Is there a window? Oh, there's lots of windows. Lots of windows. That, windows. Yeah, lots of them. The whole building's uh, cracked was gonna, glass windows. Noah's going to go walk to a window. And looking outside, you see the fog. You see lightning at times, sandstorm, dirt storm, debris storm, blood storm, water raining. It's shifting. It's immutable. It's constantly different. And you see it all outside this window. Sometimes you even see snow. It's the weirdest thing. Doesn't even make sense. It doesn't fit what you think you should be seeing, but it's there. He's just going to stay looking out until something else is said or done that grabs his attention. Okay. What is with this storm? I mean, it's not a storm like you're used to. This is like... It's all the emotional bits and bobs and things left behind and all the parts that make people people that just are blowing it. Look. It's going to take a while to explain it, but in simple terms, you all died on this train. And with these deaths, it pulled out from oblivion this storm. And they only happen normally when there's a lot of death. It's just, man, I've heard horror stories of what happened after World War II. But it'll, it'll pass in a day or so, maybe less, and then we can go back outside. Maybe I'll take you to meet Prudence. She's just down the street. You'll like Prudence. Not dead. <laughs> I'm not. Muted. I'm not dead. Yes, I. I'm not dead. We're all dead. Uh, Thomas. Mm. I'm not really interested in the game show. How do I get voted off this island? Well, uh, I don't uh, vote it off, but we're not on an island. Well, I guess you could call it an island right now, but um, I I get the idea what you're saying. You you want to leave? You want to end? Uh, that that's crazy talk. There's only one way out of this, and that's um oblivion. Uh, nothing that's destroyed. Well, I mean, I've heard that, that's pretty much the only real way, unless you believe those crazy ass religious freaks down the street. They talk something different, but. You're pretty much stuck here until, until, I mean, I've been here, what year is it? 2019. 19. 19. Wow. Wow. Mask up. Isaac, 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 so typical of you to run away. 
I haven't run anywhere. Okay, where where is it? Where's the damn speakers? Come on, you people about. heard that. Heard what? Okay, come on. What what is You're, this? Is where's the camera? Is this like some kind of a gag on me or something? What are you hearing no. voices too? Oh come on, you heard it. No. What? I heard what my did own... we hear, Isaac? Alexis turned. You guys are buying this crap. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. And faces Thomas and says, "How did you get there so quick?" Yeah. If you know how to read the signs, you know when something bad is coming. How did the others get there that quick? Those of us that try to help those who have died, we learn to read the signs of when something's happening, when something's coming. And we get there and we wait. And when it happens, sometimes we're closer, sometimes we're further. And and we try to get the people um, for different reasons. I was there to make sure that they couldn't get you. Because those boys... I don't agree with what they're doing. They like to grab people up and they like to sell them. And they either sell them to the forge or they sell them to the, the thraldom. And you end up being a, a damn whatever they have you doing in Richmond. And you, I, I couldn't see y'all to be part of that. I tried to help as many as I could. So Are when you, you say a good Samaritan then? You can call me that. I mean, I, I'll take that. That's better than the alternatives. That's a little self-aggrandizing. So when you say sell, you mean that literally, not metaphorically. Uh, yeah, literally. You'll be forced uh, indentured servitude is what they try to call it. But let's just call it what it is, slavery. Um, you don't get paid. You don't have a choice. Maybe one day you prove useful enough and they'll let you go or you'll earn your freedom. But otherwise, they will work you until you are an empty husk. And then they sell you to the forge and you get beaten into into something else and get turned into a coin or whatever they feel like making you that week instead of chains to lock on somebody else. Who knows? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So That's what, ridiculous. what did they do? They slipped something in the bottles, made me deliver it to everybody. We all got drugged. I didn't drink any. What'd you do? Gas in the, in the train or something? That's it. The fog is a gas. We're still being drugged. If this is a TV show, then how do I do this? Grab my dice a second. And he reaches up to his hand and you see him start rubbing and the hand gets shorter or slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And then he st starts playing with it. And then his, where his hand was is a screwdriver. What? What? What the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, so, wow. so this is some kind of okay, nightmare. I've seen Penn and Teller. The next thing is you poke it in your eye, right? And the eye comes out and there's goop all over the floor. That's pretty cool. Touch it. Feel it. See if it, you know. I mean, no. I don't know how else I can explain it to you. You reach up and touch and it feels like it's oddly there. It's substance. I mean, you can feel it. It moves, but it doesn't. It gives almost like flesh, but doesn't. But it's there. That kind of freaks Alexis out, like to the point where she like really just <laughs> she feels something in her and it just comes forth okay I'm gonna do uh, weirdness oh she's gonna manifest her first power that will be interesting let me pull up my reference I, I here I have the things here I spent, I I spent well. a pathos you spend a pathos to do it mm -hmm. so you feel a bit of that I feel a bit of emotion, some sort of like emotional energy almost. It's almost like you feel a bit of yourself coming out. So how many successes? Your target, um, it's six. That is three successes. And who was who did it manifest on? 
Well, it's supposed to manifest on a living target. There is none in here. But it, since it affects things in the Tempest, that means it can also affect the Restless Dead because there are no living targets in the Tempest. So it does affect the Restless Dead as well. Okay. So seeing the hand turn into a screwdriver, I hate to say it, it's going to target Thomas. And you see him. Okay, I, I don't know which one of you just did that, but y'all need to stop that. That, That's just not nice. Uh, it feels like something walking on my grave or something. Y'all need to stop. You hear, you hearing voices? Too uh, no, I, no think, well, I hear voices. We all hear. You understand. I think that was me. And you just need to stop that. It just. How do? How did I do it? And how do I stop it? What are you fucking psychic? No. No, no. It. <sighs> it it's just a. Th- You'll learn. You'll learn. It's something the restless can do. I mean, uh, uh, oh, I'm very fucking restless right now. Oh, you know, <laughs> one of these days you're gonna have to talk to the haunters. They'll, 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 they'll deal with you, Missy. They'll, they'll teach you some stuff, but it's not the time right now. I wonder what your power is, Tar. Sit around on your ass all day, wasting away, letting your life's work be stolen out from underneath you. You think that's a superpower, Tar? Oh. Yeah, apparently that has been my superpower. And what superpower? What's what, your superpower? What you Who are you talking to now? I don't think this is a superpower. This is a fucking curse. No, I was talking about myself. I was just The voice in your, I guess, proverbial head, too? In my head, head too. yeah. Whatever this is mm-hmm. now. None of this makes any sense. You know, you'll, sure. get used, you'll get used to it. Don't worry. That voice will be with you for a long time. you you get used to it. We'll talk about that once the storm dies down a bit. Don't want to encourage it any. It's already, you know, riled up enough with you guys just kind of being here. So let me get this straight. We're dead. As in... Not living, not running around, uh, yeah. not one of the uh, the quick, you're dead. Pushing up da- daisies. Well, we call ourselves a restless, but yeah, you, you're just not here. And- um, okay, so you're in... You're in what we call the shadow lands because it's like a shadow of... of it's hard to explain... Uh, I hate this this part here. I always hate having to do this. It's always to, it's so much to explain. I'm fucking English. You're here. You're dead, and um, you can see this. I mean, this building's pretty wrecked, and this is what it looks like. But you're seeing a reflection of everything. The train you saw rusted and busted out. That's just how it looks to us, because. We see things tainted as they will be a lot of times. And what happens when entropy... God, I can't believe I remember that word. That's just an odd word that... I'm I'm just... I remember what Barton told me. They said it was entropy. That all things must eventually decay. Come on. Keep going. It's... It's it's hard to explain. You're dead, okay? You are dead. You have no body. Your body is back there. You are here, okay? You could go back there when the storm's gone and look at yourself. You're dead. I've been dead a while. I got used to it. You'll get used to it. Well, some of it. So what do we do? <laughs> I, I, I'm well, just... Well, that's up I, to you. I, I'm just trying to... What are we in hell? Are we in uh, purgatory? Well, what? You talk what? to the religious freaks down the street, they'll tell you 80 answers. You're just here. So we never get to see our loved ones again. Oh, you can see them all you want. But they, they can't, can't see, see us. us. We, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way we can... We can, we can <laughs> don't, don't talk about that. 
that, that's against the rules. And if you break those rules, you'll get the legionnaires down on you. And then the legionnaires will show up. And then you're off to the damn forges or you're off to the slave market. Just, just, just drop them yeah, ideas. Legionnaires? Uh, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you talking about? Okay, whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. Rules. It's a game. I'm telling you. There's a camera somewhere. No, I think it's a game of our eternal survival. That, that's pretty close. Uh, look, there's some real old ones. I, the legionnaires are what they call themselves. They've been... I mean, if you imagine the dead around a while, this dates. A l- Let me start with the easiest part. Uh, you you read like Greek myth and all that, right? You know about Charon. Yeah. The ferryman the of the dead. Man? Yeah. Yeah. Charon was real. He died. Sorry, he went missing some time ago, but he formed a city. Stygia. One day maybe we'll go to it, but it's it's located the river sticks. There's a reason those myths are around. Is There's Hades a, real? Is what? Hades. No, but yes, but no. Uh, some say that the labyrinth is Hades. It's or is where it, you can't put the religion into all of this. The religion just complicates it all. No, I was thinking the of religion- the god. I'm assuming bits of religion all kind of come together then and form what we see here. There are bits of truth in all of the ancient stuff. Is that what you're saying? There's rumors of other places. That, they call it the far shores, and that's where some time ago you, they used to go. But there was a falling out, and they were caught doing bad things, and Stygia said no, and the legions got involved, and the ferrymen, and then Charon disappeared. The history lesson is great, but what are these rules we have to abide by to make sure we don't get destroyed? It's easy. Don't fuck with the quick. Don't fuck with the living. You stay on your side of the shroud of the the dead barrier thing, and they stay on theirs, and you don't let them know we're here, and everyone is happy-ish. Why not? (laughs) <laughs> we, we, we get to communicate oh no you're not keeping me away from my my son or my wife I can't stop you uh, you know Missy I can't I am doing what I can to help you and educate you if y'all are gonna go do it when the legionnaires find out I can't help what's gonna happen to you I can't protect you from them I don't even want to be seen by them that's why I'm not in Richmond Richmond is hierarchy territory. They play by a different set of rules than we do out here. Naturally, those in powers typically do. And they are in power. That is their city. Most of the cities are. We gotta feel we gotta deal with fucking politics while we're dead. This is this is yeah, this must oh, be. Missy, hell. You don't know the half of it, it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think we're to hell. You gotta deal with more than politics. <laughs> This you is guys, the craziest you, fucking dream. You guys are actually buying all this crap. I mean, come on. We've obviously got to find the sword, the shield, don't look in Medusa's eyes, beat the Minotaur. I mean, all this Greek tragedy crap. This is the most poorly written script I have ever heard of for a game show. This is a hell of a game show if it is. Don't listen to them, Aurora. Again, you probably shouldn't keep talking that you're not dead. I don't think they're going to understand. You're not dead. This is not a game. This is not a script. Don't you see? You're living out your greatest story. When you come out of this, you're going to have the best book of your life. This is what this all is. Your inspiration. Am am I... Am I comatose? Is this a nightmare? You're not dead. Not Just dead. know that. Not dead. Okay, not dead. I'm not dead. Okay, okay. But they don't understand that. You're just gonna scare them. Just know that you're you're fine. Okay. Go along with it. This is like it's like your plot. Maybe maybe I'm like your narrator. 
Let's look at it that way. I'm your narrator. But you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just trust me. Isaac's going to move over to Aurora and go, yeah, we're not dead. You've got it. This is yeah. all just some kind of a scam. This is this is like a story. This this does this is right. Yeah, we're not dead. You left her back there. You let her go. Okay. What's look, wrong with you, Isaac? Thomas, I'm about to kick your ass. I'm getting pissed off. You you got me worried at the beginning. This crap is over. I know Angela's fine. I know this is all bullshit. Nice light tricks. Nice voices. I don't know how you're doing it with the speakers. Oh my god, you you damn well better not have stuck anything inside my head. How many, Alexis? All right, we're not wearing earpieces. Okay. It's like I I can hear. That doesn't make any sense. I I can hear it in my 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 the conscious space. You know they yeah. they they've got these tricks. I mean, come on, you we're alive. This is all BS. It's just a game. Come on, they, what's they the would have had to redress us. That seems like well, quite the violation. Do any of you still have your phones? I mean, come on. They put a tattoo on my arm. And oh, you, you must, you've obviously looked up our past. You know our history. Whatever. Really funny, Thomas. Ha ha ha. I haven't, I haven't signed voices. a release or anything. You realize that. This dress was custom made anything? for me. And it's hanging in my closet in McLean, Virginia. Oh, it probably still is hanging there if you want to be the truth. I mean, can't help what you're wearing. That That's on you, not me. And you know, I I've heard this all before. We're not here, and it's 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 you know you're putting on a play, or you're fooling me, or you drugged me, or you, I'm drunk, or you know I've even had some claim that you know I was some sort of messiah or religious fanatic. But you'll see, you ain't you, you ain't got a choice there, Sonny. You, you gonna find out. Oh yeah. What says, happens? Starts, I walk out the door. What you gonna do about it? Oh, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna stay in here because I'm not going outside net. And right as he says that, you hear a, just a peal of thunder, but it doesn't sound like thunder you've heard before. It's an odd, I mean, it's just something sets your teeth on edge. It's like biting on tinfoil. And yes, Alexa, why do you I have remember my lighter? all the details. Hmm? Well, why do I only have my lighter? Where is you my remember phone? remember all your details of the wreck. You remember all dying. This, all this talk of people denying that they're dead has triggered Alexis to try to rack her memories for her moment of death. And you can remember flying through the air and you actually remember a brief instant of looking down and seeing a large piece of metal jutting out of your chest. And this is where we are going to end this first episode. And death surrounds us, constantly threatening and eventually overwhelming us. It cannot be ignored. It cannot be forgotten. The stench of death taints everything we say and do. The suffering of the human condition is described by the despair of purpose and the angst of spiritual malice. Life is so often devoid of meaning or significance. Life does not last long. It is but a spark in the dead black night, welcoming, welcoming us at the terminus of life. Death awaits us ever patience. But death is a rebirth. It's a stepping over, a passage through the shroud. For an ill-fated group of strangers on a train bound for Richmond, it was not the ending of their story, but the beginning. The fear, the loathing, the terror, the peace, the salvation the ecstasy and the pain, and the oblivion. Death is all, and it is nothing. And I would like to thank everyone for coming out to see this very first episode, End of the Line. I'd like to thank my amazing players, because this is the first time I have run Wraith. I've never tried to do something of this nature, and everyone was great. I loved with everyone playing. 
Um, if you like what we're doing, pop over to the Discord. Let me see. That would be this direction, I do believe, on the screen when we're airing, <laughs> is the chat. Just pop into the Discord. Link's right there in the chat if you want to follow the members of this cast. We're putting that in the chat, too. We have all the Twitters. You can follow us all on Twitter. You can also pop on Discord, of course. Um, Experience-wise, we're going to hand out the experience right now. And I want to hand this out because, you know, we're going to do this on screen because we're doing something different than we did with DC for experience on this. Um, though we're recorded... Uh, the viewers have a say in the experience for everybody. Um, this is going to be the way I like to do it for this one. So let me pull up my character or my XP formula here so everyone can, we can go through this. Now, of course, everyone first gets a point for playing. Okay. So we're going to give everybody Sweet. a point. One whole point. Hey. I know. Holy Isn't cow. It? Let me find my experience page. Now, when the, you when get. The viewers, they, they loved it. They, they absolutely love it. They probably, I hope they enjoyed this because this <laughs> was sure dark so. but fun. Because um, this was cross. fun. I think everyone was, learned something in this game. Some of some of our shadows are a little slow to rouse. Some are. Dunk. dunk. Good. <laughs> Good. Like, I'm, I'm, gl yeah, I'm, I'm excited that. You didn't get shadowed yet? That, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, there's, Just wait. I think everyone no, learned well, something. Yeah. So since everybody learned something, you get one more point for the learning curve. Okay. Uh, I was in, I everyone role played well. You'll get the Yay, third school. point for role play. Yay! Now Yay, here comes the one that I'm going to have the players vote on. Each player can nominate one person that they feel uh, advance the benefit of the circle as a whole. If they feel anyone did, if they don't think the story at this point anyone benefited the circle, which is the group of players. But otherwise, everyone, so we'll ask Tam first. Do you have one you think, or do you think everyone did about the same and we don't need I, to give I, that extra bonus? I don't know. I need, I need to think for a moment on that one because okay. there we'll were some you interesting think. things that came through. So. Uh, Nikki? Oh, oh my goodness. I, I'm going to have to go with um, Alexis. You, you were so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have one for Alexis. Okay, uh, Dan? Um, I'm going to give mine to uh, Tam because I think, uh, especially early on the train, like he was doing a good job of interacting with all the players and building a rapport there, even though my character could care less. <laughs> and then after that, I whether it benefited or not, it it uh, I think we all kind of rallied around his like cynicism and like this is a game and like whether we believe him or not it was kind of the the waypoint the rooting of that, the, the, the uh, circle drew, as a whole yes that, that drew our attention okay so tam Berlin? i'm gonna give it to tam okay because i i picked up on the same things dan did that's two votes on tam okay uh lance three votes on tam <laughs> yeah. and finally we come to evie eternal i'll give it to tam <laughs> So, Tam, you'll get one more experience. And now, as for usually all the viewers, happens, my vote doesn't matter now because you guys have all outvoted me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can still say who it was. You can still say yeah. who it was. Yeah. I, I, because I've if your reasoning say, is good enough, I will give uh, an extra point to somebody else okay. as well. Well, this is going to sound really serving of Dan here now, but I love he was the first shadow, but I also love that his, his shadowing brought out the you're still alive. Mm -hmm. That played so that much good. into the disbelief that we're not dead yet. <laughs> this is all crap. <laughs> I agree with yeah. that. And, and that kind of feel, that fueled it for my character to be able to f go on and say, "Yeah, we're not As dead." Storyteller, I will also give one to Dan for that because you're right. Even my character, in opposition to that, she knows she died. She's now starting to work towards that acceptance, and now she's just relived that moment of death. Yeah, she just pulled yeah. on. Uh, I, 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 did, I, I did activate a power for that. It was keys to the memory palace. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. So yeah, one awesome. XP goes to Tam and one goes to Dan this time Thank you. as a bonus. Now, all the Thank viewers you. out there, pop over to our Discord, mm -hmm. go to our uh, the Necropolis. Wraith, the, yeah, the <laughs> Necropolis and uh, vote for who you think should also get one bonus experience. It can be for any reason. Any you can vote because you like them. You can vote because you don't like them. You can vote just because you thought the hair color was cool. You could vote because you liked how they screamed into the mic. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can vote for anybody to see who gets the last bonus experience point. Um, 
And since each player got three at a minimum, everyone's shadow gains one experience. So their shadows got stronger. And now we're going to finish the rest of our outro, which Dan's is, my of wake course, up next session. <laughs> I, 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 no, I mean, I legit think it was great and appropriate that it didn't come out. It didn't come out yet. Session. He's not yeah. sure what the fuck's going on yet. Well, and, I like well, and I was like, and Park. And I'm, I'm like, you, you guys are not. Don't listen to voices. Why are you listening to voices? In this <laughs> and then all of a sudden, next session, yours yep. comes out, and you're like, fuck. So we are going. Let me finish our outro real quick. Um, if you want to catch back episodes of anything on McStabber Studios, you can go to uh, the McStabber Studios YouTube in the chat, or you can go if you wanted to get back episodes of Haunted Chronicles. Pop over to their YouTube. They're in the same chat link. Give them a follow, please, on, on YouTube. Give them a subscribe. Let's get their, their short URL so we can get rid of the long URLs. Mm-hmm, um, Ishvel, which is our other show, pop over there. Give them um, a subscribe, too, because they them have a that subscribe long URL, and we want the short one. Once they get 100 yeah. subscribers, they'll get the shorter URL, and it's great. Yeah. Um, if you want to watch Haunted Chronicles, every Tuesday, 8 p.m. It's a great show. You will see Evie, Dan, and Tam Shuanette, and... Nikki of Ravinia from time to time. <laughs> Do you see her as well? She pops in and Relin even is a guest on, once in a while. So we'll see um, if I am again. We'll see. She may be dead. We don't know. Um, <laughs> does does Elowen have a twin? No. no. Saturdays at an 1 Ella, p.m. An Ella twin. Hey, let him talk. Yeah, so yeah, let me finish our outros. Saturday at 1 p.m. is Ishvel. D D, Viking themed. Great game. Got a damn flying boat. I just love the flying boat. <laughs> I would play for the flying boat, but it's you know. We've got a one shot coming up, I believe, July 28th. 24th, I thought. Which 24th? 24th. We're doing a Seventh Seas game? Nope. Oh, that's 24th the 24th is Big yes. Motherfucking Crab Truckers. So yep. 24th, 24th is Big Motherfucking Crab Truckers. Truckers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. See, so many one shots coming up. I know. 24th, <laughs> Big Motherfucking <laughs> Crab Truckers. 28th is Seventh Seas. Yep. So I'm not in the Big Motherfucking tribe Crab Truckers unless I end up in it. We'll see. Uh, I've told Tam I will be in it if he needs the players for it. Um, but I am in 7th C. I'm going to be a pirate. Yar. I already got the beard for it, so I'm set. <laughs> and he's got an eye patch somewhere. Yeah, I'll find my eye patches. And um, if you like what we're doing, give us a subscribe. Um, so you know all bits and donations go to the players of the stream. So if you really want to you know, buy these players a cup of coffee, you can donate through the donation link in the Twitch panels, or you can just donate bits. Buy and, me a uh, martini. Okay, that's a little bit more than a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, buy Mart- so Relin says buy her Starbucks. Got it. There you go. <laughs> Same price as a martini. But yeah. <laughs> I-, I would like to thank everyone for coming, and I would like to say that a uh, great group of players. I loved what we did, and we will see you next week on Wednesday at 8 p.m., mm-hmm. and um, hopefully you enjoy what we're doing. And um, we're recording these so that you can chat with the players. So if you've got a question during any of these episodes, hit them up in chat. They'll tell you how they felt about any given scene. Um, and you probably can't stop me from talking the whole time we're watching this. So it's okay. Um, <laughs> anyone have anything they want to add as we're going out? Anything? Now's the time for you to, any personal things you want to say about what we've done tonight. This is a really, really cool game. And I'm <laughs> so hyped to play more. I know. It's like, God, I want to keep playing. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Two hours. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, you mean 12. Yeah. I'm looking at, I just know at some point, I'm not going to be able to deny we're dead anymore. And I'm waiting for that moment because I think it's going to come like a hand. Uh Uh So anything you want to add, Dan or or Lance or Nikki, anything to add to the. Don't listen to the voices. Don't listen to the voices. voices. That's a good uh, policy in life. So from McStabber Studios, thank you for coming and watching this dark first episode. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed playing it. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.